BI brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit this week. It is Analog Devices. Lady Ada, what is this week's new product introduction? I'm glad you asked. This week's MPI is the, uh, can you go back again? It was the Mac 77859. Um, this is a really cool buck boost converter. We just moved to Brooklyn. So uh, in honor of Biggie Smalls, this is a big boost buck boost converter with a small footprint uh lots of current um and a large uh you know big input if big output current big input voltage range um 2.5 to 2.2 volts input 7.8 amp switching current um it's a buck boost it's got a couple h bridge in there um so you only need one inductor which is really cool so it's a nice and compact buck boost converter it's designed for usb type c power delivery um you know it's kind of designed for the output mode where you can select whether you want 5, 9, 12, 15, 18, or 20 volts output. But I also think, it, it, you know, the reason I looked at this part is I think it would make for a great um, converter from a USB PD input. So, for example, you know, let's say you want to uh, drive some 5 volt LEDs. You have a lot of LEDs or LED panels. You want um, 5, 6 amps of 5 volt output. Well, USB PD converter, te they tend not to let you have more than three amps at five volts, but you can get three amps at 12 volts or three amps at 20 volts, and then buck that down to three amps at 12 volts, you'll get six or more amps at five volts, uh, again, using this uh, handy dandy converter. And of course, you can also boost up. So let's say you want 12 volts output. It doesn't matter what the USB PD power supply uh, provides. If it provides five, it'll get, you can still get 12 volts out. It gives you 12, cool, you know, get 12, 12. If it gives you 20, you buck down, you get more current. So it's kind of like an all-in-one power supply for anytime you're dealing with USB uh, Type-C power delivery um, power supplies, which I think I, I think they're the bomb. I think they're way better than DC power supplies. Um, so a couple things about this board that's nice. Um, so like I said, um, very high, very wide input voltage. Wide output voltage um, can give you about four to six amps, depending on you know the configuration. Um, it has I squared C support, which I'll talk about, uh, standalone support, and um, because it's buck boost, you don't have to worry about whether you're going high or low. Uh, but you only need one inductor, so it's nice and compact. Um, the A version you see on the right, there's the R sense. The A version has. Um, current sensing and maximum current limiting as well, uh, which I think is pretty neat. That's the version that's available on DigiKey. But otherwise you see the um, schematic is quite simple. You don't need a lot of um, components, especially if you're using um, the default five volt output until you do I2C configuration. Because with I2C configuration, you, you, you configure it post boot. So, you know, when it starts up, what's the voltage output? By default, it's five volts, unless you connect something to the feedback resistors. Um, so in this case, you know, if the feedback is tied to out, great, means you have, uh, you know, five volts output by default. And then you can use the SDA and SCL pins um, to change the voltage, change the currents. It's uh, nicely efficient. You know, it's going to be much better, of course, at uh, high currents. Um, but there are two modes. You can have it in, um, you know, PWM mode or I don't know the other mode. But basically, there's a mode that's good at below 100 milliamps and the mode that's better at above. Um, you can dynamically choose those or uh, strap it with resistors, um, but it has good efficiency with 3.3 to 20 volts output. You can get at least 80 percent uh, up to 90, 95 percent, especially at uh, one amp and above. Another thing that's really nice is it has built in current limiting. Um, so that's good if you want to make sure, you know, there's, there's short circuit protection, but still sometimes it's not quite, you know, with 7.8 amps of, uh, you know, built in switch capacity. You want to make sure that um, if you're driving something, it shouldn't be drawing more than uh, one amp or two amps. You can internally limit it uh, either by using a resistor uh, to set the IREF current or, like I said, by uh, configuring it over I2C. So that's kind of nice. Um, can also mean you don't end up overloading your power delivery source uh, because if it's you know limited to how much current it can provide you, usually you you talk PD to the supply, it'll tell you, oh, I can only provide one amp at nine volt max. That means you know, like, okay, my five volt output shouldn't go above 1.5 amps, or I could end up, um, 
you know, dragging the input voltage down below the, the lockout. Um, so standalone mode, you don't need to use this with I2C. If you have a fixed output voltage and a fixed current limit, um, you just want to have any voltage input and you just want like a nine volt out, five volt out, whatever, at up to four amps. Um, really easy to set up. You only need a couple of capacitors and like two resistors just to, to set the current limiting. Um, and then like that big inductor, you know, you do the math in the data sheet, um, but you're really pretty much ready to go. So that's the, the fixed standalone setup. Check the data sheet for the feedback resistors, but it's kind of standard, you know, there's a, a, um, a voltage it's looking for and you do a divider. Um, and then there's also, there's internal and external, uh, Feedback resistors, the internal one, um, I think that's when you're using I2C, but external, you know, you can again fix it if you want just nine volt output or, or whatever. And, you know, it does have here like three, 3.3 to 20 in the standard uh, USB type C voltages. But of course, if you want 10 and a half volts, you can do 10 and a half as well. The I2C interface is where I think it's kind of fun because after you set up like the default output voltage, then you can use I2C to configure it. Or if you don't want to have a default output, just pull the enable pin low by default. And then, you know, when you're ready to um, uh, talk to the chip and configure it, then, you know, turn on the enable pin so you don't end up having a, a different voltage. Only thing to watch out for is the IO supply. That's the I2C uh, voltage reference. It's like 1.8 volts. It's not 3.3. So you'll need a level shifter for that. Um, not a ton of registers, but like, you know, kind of enough. Um, it won't tell you the output voltage or the output current, you know, if you want to do measurements for that, um, use a separate, uh, you know, I2C voltage and current, um, you know, measuring ADC type thing. Um, but you can set the output voltage, I think at 20 millivolts per step, and you can set the output current limit at 50 milliamps per step. So, you know, small enough that basically is the programmable output power supply, which is another thing can be useful for. Um, you're talking to some sort of sensor or motor or interface where you want to be able to dynamically scale the voltage, um, but still provide up to four amps. Um, you will be able to do that with this chip. Just don't forget when you, you know, on startup, it's going to default to whatever that um, strap resistor you, you uh, set it up for in standalone mode. Um, a couple of variants are available, although three of them are not available yet. The one that's in stock right now is the Max 77859A, which is, it does have current limiting, um, but it's a WLP package. So WLP package is like a VGA and it's, it's small. It's like 3.3 by 2.8 millimeters, um, 0.4 millimeter pitch. So you will definitely need to have, you know, x-ray inspection um for this because there's a lot of pads that need to be connected together and there's a few pads on the right hand side that you'll need to plug vs for um a little bit of a bummer but thankfully there's also a qfn version which i'm definitely eyeing um love the look of this one because it looks it's a little bit bigger it's four by four millimeters but it's 0.5 millimeter pitch with nice big pads for the power and uh inductor that the power path on the left hand side and all the control pins on the right hand, like you see, there's there's not a lot of pins. It's only I, I like it when there's less than 30 IO on a power chip. For the layout, um, like I said, probably need a four or six layer design because you need to get um those traces out from underneath, especially on the opposite side of the power path. Um, thankfully the power path at least, you know, it can the inner pins connect to the outer pins, so it kind of creates like a big um fill layer. Uh, you will need to spec the inductor, you know, tr do the best you can based on what you think the input voltage and output voltage is going to be in the amount of current. You can also change the frequency, by the way, over I2C dynamically, which I thought was kind of cool. There's an eval board available um, if you want to get started immediately. Uh, those are also in stock. And what's nice is the pricing. It's like, a, you know, a buck 25 in quantity uh, and it's in stock at DigiKey. I love the post chip shortage where it's like they have 3000 in stock right now. So if you want to try out this really nice power supply, um, whether or not you're doing uh, USB PD, maybe you just want a programmable power supply. Um, and this is a great buck boost chip, especially the fact that you only need one inductor and it's I2C programmable. Great chip. It's good to be back and give everyone their weekly fix of NPI, new product introduction. I'm NPI. For anybody for DigiKey. Hi, I'm NPI.